Hi everybody, it's Alex Gray. Here you will see only the most interesting news in the world. So, let's begin. The Third World War is inevitable. The unique footage has appeared on the social network of US representatives at NATO. As Americans hit a Russian Navy ship with the latest laser LGBT weapon uh, during exercise in the Baltic Sea. The consequences of the fight are unknown to the Russian side, but according to the preliminary information, the life of the ship's crew will never be the same. As you know, the Russian government is so afraid of LGBT propaganda in the country and so afraid of the gay, lesbian and other people that is different from this government thoughts about normal people. So they are so afraid of the rainbow that is symbolized of the LGBT that they delete this rainbow everywhere in the country. One of the civil servant uh, tried to ban this ice cream with a rainbow. It's so funny that they're afraid of even the rainbow picture on the ice cream uh, that they think that this is LGBT propaganda uh, in the country that is uh, forbidden here. So this news uh, about this rainbow that hits the ship uh, is they could really take it serious and think that this is a weapon and now they will check every man on that ship uh, about LGBT that he is not changing any sides, any thoughts about this. Uh, it, it could be really a serious problem for the government. Uh, and it's so funny that they have so much problems in the country and they uh, still focused on that uh, things that don't matter at all. A petition to install a monument of the American gay porno actor Billy Harrington instead of the monument to Catherine II in Odessa uh, in Ukraine has gained enough votes uh, on the website of the office of president of, Uk of Ukraine and now Vladimir Zelensky uh, will have to consider it. will it be installed uh, seriously on this square and uh, this is now a serious question for government in Ukraine because now a lot of different monuments to the USSR, to the uh, Second World War uh, and this USSR monuments, uh, a lot of them are destroyed in Ukraine because they don't want to be connected with that ideology of communists that was uh, in uh, USSR and now still in Russia, in modern Russia, in Russian Federation, uh, that they want to destroy every monument that is uh, not fit to that ideology of Ukraine right now because it's almost 70 years have passed since the end of the World War II and the Russian government is still saying about this that we are so great country that we uh, won this this um, you know, this war this terrible war because they talk so much about that on the Russian media that's the impression about Russian achievements the biggest achievement in modern Russia is the victory in World War II because if you look at the economy right now it's uh, falling the population of the country is not growing everything is going down and the biggest achievement is the victory in world war ii 70 years ago of course it was a terrible war and a lot of people have died about 25 million of uh, people of ussr have died there and that was the achievement of ussr not the modern russia and the UN USSR was all that countries that now divided like Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Belarus, all the people was in the one country and this achievement is not only of the one country and thanks to the allies like USA, England, uh, France, all that countries that participate in that war uh, they helped a lot and if you don't know about Mongolia, how Mongolia helped the USSR. They gave so much food for the USSR soldiers, uh, for the people and about the clothes and the, the shoes, the warm shoes. They gave a lot to the USSR to help. And this achievement of the, a lot of countries, not only the one. But they talk about that only the Russia is uh, responsible for the victory. An American was captured in the occupied Kherson. He did not participate in any fighting. 
but was captured allegedly uh, because of his participation in uh, pro-Ukrainian rallies. 35 years old Sari Murkezi, according to The Guardian, has been living in Kherson since 2020. The brother of the captured American said that uh, Murkezi called him on the July 7 and informed that he was in prison in Donetsk, where two other Americans, Alexander Druk and the Andy Hoon, uh, were being held. They used him as a pawn for the propaganda purposes. There is no evidence that Murkezi participated in the fighting. But his family fears that Russia will fabricate uh, charges to sentence him uh, to a long prison sentence. And it's not farther from the truth. As we know, a lot of different cases in Russia are fabricated and I don't think that they won't dare to fabricate any evidence for that American. As you know, there is no fair uh, courts in Russia and all the judges are the government workers, they uh, depend on the government uh, and they don't have their own opinion and uh, they only take the money and only the following the orders that men from the top are given to them. If they won't follow that orders, they will just lose their jobs. Uh, so we don't have fair courts in Russia at all, especially for that serious cases that involved uh, different uh, foreigners or some serious um, cases about big amounts of money or about other countries. All that courts are not fair. And about the politicians that against uh, the position of the government, uh, there is no fair, fair courts at all. I don't know how much uh, accurate, but there's a lot of uh, oppositioners that are in prison right now for their speeches about the war, about the special operation, how this war is called in Russia, and about the fakes that uh, people talk about some news from the foreign media, from BBC or other uh, sources, and they talk that this is fake and they just sent that man to the prison. He just quoted the text from another media and he's going to the prison for fakes. The result of the destruction of ammunition depots in the photo. On left is a map of attacks on Ukraine. Uh, you, as you can see, there's a lot of attacks on that day. On the right, after the destruction of ammunition depots of Russia uh, four days later. As you see, the reduction of attacks is enormous. There was uh, several hundred of attacks and now it's only 10th or 10 or 20 and it's a big achievement for uh, Ukrainian artillery thanks to the USA for the high marses the contribution of USA and their high marses to that war is enormous thanks USA for that uh, high mars rockets I think uh, they will help a lot of to Ukraine to end that war uh, much faster than they will they would handle it without that rockets now people will be more safe in their houses because the destruction of the cities is so big is so much house is destroyed I don't know how people will live in that city after the war they will they will need to spend several hundred million dollars to reconstruct to uh, create all the new houses because a lot of them are so destroyed that they must be um, reconstruct from the beginning and I think that Russia should pay for all that losses in Ukraine and after the end of the war um, we will see how Russia will pay a lot of money to Ukraine for all that destruction the Federal Penitentiary Service of Russian Federation uh, says that IKEA can be replaced with the goods made by convicts the department explains that uh, such work is cheap but effective and surpasses imported things in price and quality. Of course, we know that this production is very cheap because convicts in Russian prisons uh, has so small salary for their jobs that of course it will be very cheap. But I don't think that uh, a lot of prisons will uh, make such good things like IKEA did with this big production of IKEA and it's funny how Russian media says about that and this and federal penitentiary service 
uh, are funny people that they say that convicts could make goods uh, better than Ikea. I don't know what in their heads that they uh, want to import ev everything and it's of course it's impossible. N no one it's not production, it's prison. They will not do uh, the standard um, uh, goods for IKEA, like, like in IKEA. It will be the handmade uh, one piece and it will be no standard because there's so much prisons in Russia and I don't think that all the convicts will work in that industry. I don't think that it's real, it's only uh, if just a news just to say uh, big words uh, to the government, to the people, that we are good, we will handle that, EK is nothing for Russia. Of course, the EK is nothing for Russian people, but uh, as I see, everything is my, in my room uh, is made in IKEA. The table, the bed, the f wardrobe, all this from IKEA, because IKEA is really good production. It's cheap and the quality is very good. So it's really funny to hear that convicts could go could make better than IKEA. They could make they could make one thing, but they could not make thousands of tables of beds for uh, all the Russia. Hit the like, subscribe for more. Comment down below what you think about that news. This was Alex Gray, and goodbye.